Today we're talking all about budgeting and I'm going to be showing you my real numbers and how I use a realistic budget in my life. Hi, I'm Kamiko from The Budget Mom. Come along with me as I strive to live a life I love on a budget that I can afford. Welcome to The Budget Mom YouTube channel. Today we are doing my first ever budget overview over on YouTube. So. My budget overviews aren't new. In fact, I've been sharing my real budget over on Instagram for over a year. And so today I wanna to show everyone over on YouTube what I do every single time I budget my money. Now I am a paycheck budgeter, which means I budget my money every single time I receive a paycheck. I receive a paycheck on the 5th and I receive a paycheck on the 20th. So on each of those days, I create a new budget. Every single one of my paycheck budget is a zero-based budget. And what that means is every single dollar of my income has a plan or is being used somewhere in my budget. Now today it might seem a little bit overwhelming because I'm literally gonna be showing you every single detail about my budget. And so the question becomes, why did I decide to start sharing my real numbers out there in the world? So when I started my budgeting journey back in 2011, one of the things that I felt kind of lacked out there was the psychological reasons behind finances and behind real budgeting. And it's one of the main reasons I decided to start The Budget Mom. I felt like people were saying how to budget, but they weren't telling me why they were making the decisions they were making and what it truly looked like to run a successful budget in someone's real life. And so I was getting tired of being shown examples or being told how to budget and not seeing how it really applied to everyday life. I want to be able to provide that help and that service by showing you what it really looks like, but not only that, why am I making the decisions I'm making? Because I really do believe a lot of the times with our finances, with our budgets, things are driven by emotion. They're driven by feelings. And until you can understand the underlying emotions and feelings of why someone is making the decisions they are making with their money, it's hard to understand or grasp the process. And so that's really why I started sharing my real numbers. It's been a really, really popular over on Instagram, and I truly do believe it's helped a lot of people implement these steps and these processes into their everyday life. With that being said, though, it's really important that when you're looking at my budget overviews, not to feel like you have to be doing the same thing that I'm doing, that your numbers have to be the same, that your categories have to be the same, that your cash envelopes have to be the same. The purpose of these videos and my budget overviews is to show you the process, is to show you the steps, is to show you and tell you about those psychological things, those feelings, those emotions, the reason behind the decisions. I don't want to just tell you how to budget. I want to show you how to budget. So today we're going to be doing a full budget overview for the paycheck that I just received on January 5th. And I'm going to be showing you literally every detail and the process of what this looks like. So let me show you. I try sharing my story to remind readers that there is a way out. That with hard work, dedication, determination, motivation, it's all about having a plan for your money. And that's what gives you the true control. Holy crap, it just changed my life. They're like, oh man, Nico. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes work. For today's budget overview, it's really important to know that creating a budget is very, very personal. So everything that has to go on with your budget has to do with your real life. It's your personal finances. In fact, your budget is one of the most personal things you'll ever create. It's a reflection of your life. And so when I'm showing you my budget categories or how much I'm pulling out for my envelopes or how much I'm assigning to a category, it all has to do with my personal spending. And I'll be walking you through those steps and those processes on why I'm deciding to use certain amounts for certain categories or maybe a, a category for my cash envelope. But it really 
A successful budget and making it work hinders on your ability to know your money inside and out. It's about tracking your spending. It's about knowing where every dollar is going. And until you have that awareness, which really is the first step in creating a realistic budget, you can't move forward. And so it's all about awareness and learning about where your money is going in order to create the next step, which is creating a realistic budget. So let's get started. Today we're going to be going over my January 5th paycheck. Now I gave you a little shot of my table. It's quite crazy. But the first thing that I start off with with my budget is I fill out a budget calendar. And this is my January budget calendar. This is the calendar that I use to remind myself of everything that needs to be included in my in my budget, not just my bills, but I also have my appointments, I have my paychecks, I have my events, my holidays. This is usually color coded um, by paycheck, by events, and by appointments. So as you can see, my paycheck on the 5th is in blue, and I'm gonna be paying all of these different highlighted blue items with this paycheck on the 5th. At my paycheck on the 20th is highlighted in green, and all of these um, things that you see highlighted in green is what I'm gonna pay with my paycheck on the 20th. I have my appointments in purple and my holidays and events in yellow. It's just a nice clear way to see on a monthly view what my budget needs to include. It's also a great reminder so I don't forget anything. So this is what my budget looks like. I use what's called a paycheck bill tracker and because I budget my money when I am paid, this paycheck and the expenses that you see on this budget is only some of my bills. Remember, I still get paid on the 20th and I'll be paying other bills at that time. The first thing that I start off with is paying my monthly bills. Now, with my income, every single month, I use an estimated income to determine what bills, what expenses I'm gonna pay with my, my, my um, paycheck. Now, my paycheck is estimated on the worst case scenario, meaning I'm only using money that I know I'm going to receive, and that's usually an estimate of the least amount I know I'm going to receive. That way, if my paycheck is more, I can decide at that time what I wanna do with the extra money. So I base my budget on that estimated income, and then when I get my pay stub a couple um, days before my paycheck, I write in the actual dollar amount and fill out the rest of my budget. So this is my complete budget. I pay all of my regular monthly bills online. I pull everything out in cash to use for my cash envelopes. Now these are my cash envelopes that I'm using for this pay period. I like to design and use new envelopes for every single paycheck. That's just me. It's a, a thing that I've incorporated into my budget that makes budgeting fun for me. I like being creative and so I design new cash envelopes. Now, these are really fun cash envelopes that I designed recently. They're actually coloring envelopes. So I got a lot of requests on my Instagram to create a black and white design, something you guys can color in at home. And I actually finished coloring my food cash envelope. So um, I'll be coloring in the rest of these as I go along through this pay period. But this is what I pull my cash out for is these different, we call them variable expenses. Your fixed expenses are your regular bills. It's the things that you have to pay month to month to month. Your variable expenses are things that really fluctuate from month to month. It's your gas, it's your food, it's your fun expenses, it's your clothing. Those things are called variable expenses. So within my budget, I pay all of my regular bills online. And as you can see, with this paycheck, my bills add up to $239. So what do my bills look like for my paycheck on the 5th? I have my phone bill and I write down each bill but the due date that they're due, so just a nice reminder on my paycheck um, bill tracker as well or my budget. So a couple of things kind of changed and I know this is my first budget overview on YouTube but I used to have a student loan payment. I just got done paying off my student loans um, this last, actually technically this month in the beginning of the month. Um, it just got posted to my student loan account. 
So I used to have student loans written here, but I don't have that payment anymore. The next thing that kind of changed, um, I have Hulu and Netflix. I started this because I really didn't know which service I wanted. I've decided I'm going to cancel Hulu and I'm gonna keep Netflix. And so this will not be on my February 5th paycheck budget because I'm gonna be canceling that today. The next thing you see is a cushion. Now I like to keep a checking account cushion because I'm using a zero base budget, every dollar of my income has a plan. And that really means that essentially every dollar is being spent or being used, which means my checking account is technically being brought down to zero. When I first started zero based budgeting, the fact or the thought of my checking account being brought down to zero freaked me out. And so I started what's called a checking account cushion. I put $40 every single paycheck towards my cushion. It literally just sits in my bank account and I don't touch it. Um, it's great for things like if you have a bill that's higher than expected or you have maybe an unexpected online purchase that you have to use your checking account. Because I am an all cash spender and I spend cash from these cash envelopes, I hardly ever swipe my debit card, but there are instances where I will have an unexpected online purchase. I need to make sure that I have money in my checking account to cover that until I can reimburse my checking account with cash from my envelopes. And so the checking account cushion will also help you from overdraft fees. It's the cushion, my checking account cushion has actually been probably one of the most impactful things that has helped me on my debt payoff journey because it prepares me not to use my credit cards or go into debt for unexpected expenses or everyday life. And so um, I like to have a total checking account cushion of about $1,000 in my checking account at all times. When you see AF savings, this is my vacation savings. I put $50 every single paycheck into my vacation savings. It's nice to have that in case I wanna do a weekend trip or a small getaway. I have that. I'm not forced or pressured to use a credit card for those types of expenses. This all has to do with rewarding yourself along the way. I am a huge believer in the reward system and rewarding yourself and budgeting your money in a way where you can still have fun and you can still budget for the things that make you happy. Because if you're so restrictive within your budget, a lot of time people get frustrated they feel like it's too restrictive they can't go out and do the things that they enjoy so i make sure to budget those things inside my budget so on for my january 5th paycheck 239 dollars is getting paid for bills which leaves me 943 dollars left over so what i do now is i decide okay if my regular bills are paid and i have 943 dollars of my income left I need to make sure I have money for my variable spending, and that's what I use for my cash envelopes. So let me explain how my cash envelopes work. These are the cash envelopes that I used with my last paycheck. And as you can see, I had some money left over in my envelope. So for instance, in my beauty envelope, I still had $31 in cash in this envelope at the start of this paycheck. So I have a beauty envelope for this paycheck. Here's the $31 that was left over from my last paycheck. I literally just put it in my new envelope. And as you can see, now I budgeted, as you can see on my budget, $75 for beauty. Here's the budgeted amount. And then here's me rolling over the $31 from last paycheck into this new envelope. So I pulled out cash for my cash envelopes. $75 is gonna get put towards my beauty envelope. So I literally just pull out $75 and I stick it in my envelope. 
So right now in my beauty envelope, I have $106. I have my budgeted amount plus what I rolled over from last paycheck. So this envelope is done. There is instances though, where let me show you. I did not use any of my gas budget with my last paycheck. It's kind of crazy. I was on vacation. I literally did not drive anywhere. I didn't use any gas. We went and visited my boyfriend's family for Christmas. He actually filled up my gas tank at that time. I didn't use any gas. So I had $125 left over in my gas envelope. I am not going to need that much money or cash in this paychecks gas envelope. So I have my new gas envelope and here's what I did. Since I know I'm not gonna use $125 plus my budgeted amount for my gas, this is what I do. I only roll over a little bit. So I rolled over $50 and I saved the rest. And it looks like this. So any money that I saved from my last paychecks cash envelopes, I put in a little paper clip. I write down how much I was able to save and the paycheck on where the money came from. And I will actually put this into my checking account um, with my last paycheck and I will make an extra debt payment or I will put it towards savings, whatever my goal is. So I did that with each one of my envelopes. So with this envelope, I budgeted $75 for gas. So that's where I go to my cash, that I pulled out for my cash envelopes and I pull out $75. And I stick that in the envelope. So now I have a total of 125 inside my gas envelope. And that one's done. So I go through basically all of my old envelopes from my last paycheck and I decide how much am I going to roll over, how much am I going to put towards savings or paying off debt. And it really all deter, de, for me, the deciding factor is am I going to really realistically need that much cash in my envelopes for this pay period? If not, I save it. So with my pet envelope, I had $34 left over from my last paycheck. I decided to roll over 20 of that and I saved the other 14 and it got put into my put into my stash. So on this one I would literally just pull out $20. And as you can see, I already have the $20 rolled over and I'm going to add my budgeted amount of $20 in there with a total now balance for $40 for my pet guinea pig penny. So that envelope is now done. So I literally go through every, every single envelope and that's how I stuff my envelopes. So for food, I had only $54 left over from my last envelope. I decided on my food, I was gonna roll that all over. So I have $304 from this paycheck that I can use for food because I budgeted $250 Plus the 54 that I rolled over gives me a new balance of 304 and I just stick my budgeted amount in there from the cash I pulled out. So that one is done. With my fun, I didn't spend any fun cash from my last paycheck. It's kind of crazy, especially since I was on vacation, but I really just did not spend a lot of cash my last pay period. So I take out my fun envelope this time. So. With this one, I had $60, $68 left in my fund. I decided to roll over $18 of that and I saved my bigger bills in my savings stack right here. So this one, I only budgeted $50. So I add that to the 18 that I'm rolling over and I got $68 in my fund envelope. And the last envelope that I have is my miscellaneous envelope. So on this one, I had $40 left over in my miscellaneous envelope. I rolled over 20 and I saved the other 20. So on this one, I literally am just going to put $50 of my budgeted money in there for a total of $75 in this miscellaneous envelope. 
So all of my cash envelopes have now been what we call stuffed. These are now stuffed. So I have a total, now I have my what I budgeted for. So out of the $943 that I had left over after paying my regular bills, I then pulled out cash, the cash that you're seeing here, and I'm left with $423 because all of my envelopes added up to $520. So then I got to ask myself, okay, the necessities are taken care of. I took care of my regular bills. I took care of my variable spending. What do I do with this leftover income, this $423? Well, that's where you have to decide what are your financial goals. And it's really important to establish those goals before you create a budget because you have to know where you're going to put your money. Your spending has to align with what you want to achieve. And so for me, I have sinking funds in my budget and they look like this. So for all of my holidays and events, I save in sinking funds envelopes. And in fact, I did a video on my YouTube all about my sinking funds, and I'll put a, descript or a link to that video in the description of this video. But essentially, I want to plan for the future. I want to make sure I have cash ready to go for these expenses so I'm not pressured to put this stuff on debt or use debt to fund these expenses. So... How it looks like in my budget, I use the 423, which is right here, which is leftover income after paying my bills and my variable spending, and I break down my savings sinking funds. What do my sinking funds really look like? So the number one sheet that I use, I call it my yearly savings goals and events tracker. So this is where I decide what events, what holidays, for the year do I want to have cash for? I write down the amount that I'd like to have plus the monthly amount that I need to save to have the money by the due date. So for instance, for Valentine's Day, I would like $100 and I would like it by the last paycheck of January. So I actually started saving for that in July of 2018. And my Valentine's Day is right here. And as you can see, all of my Valentine's money is saved already. And so um, I will have that paid for and completed this goal with this paycheck. Fourth of July, I'd like to have $100 by June. So I take the $100 and divide by how many months I have to save and that tells me I need to save $17 a month for 4th of July. This is how I figure out my sinking funds. So if we come back to my budget, you can see that I'm putting the full monthly amount with this one paycheck. I am a paycheck budgeter. I get paid twice a month. So you might be asking, why am I doing the full month on this one paycheck? I could split it into two. Well, the reason is, is because my bill amount was really low with this paycheck. I had the income to just pay the full month for my sinking funds with this one paycheck, and that's what I decided to do. For Valentine's Day, for Valentine's Day, I need to put $7 in my sinking funds envelope. Now, I do pull out cash for my sinking funds as well, so I literally just pull out $7 of the cash that I pulled out and I stuff it into my sinking funds envelope. Fourth of July, I had $17 that I need to save from this paycheck. So I literally just pull out $17 of the cash that I pulled out from the bank and I stick it in there. For my boyfriend's birthday, it's $34. Now I do put all of my birthday money inside one envelope, so I have my boyfriend's birthday, which he needs $34 for that. But on top of that, I also have my son's birthday that I'm saving for, and he gets $29 for that birthday. So 
So both of these sinking funds get saved into one envelope. It's my birthday envelope. This is the envelope I use for birthdays for the next for this year. And then I have Christmas, which is $73. So that takes care of that. Stick that into my envelope. And now I have back to school. Now, if I stuff my envelopes correctly, I should be left with the exact amount of $32, which I am. So it gets put back to school. All of my envelopes, when you're out of cash, all of your envelopes are stuffed and ready to go. So I have my sinking funds done. And I have my cash envelopes ready until I get paid again until the 20th in the cash and how much I have to spend in cash for each of these categories. Now the categories that I use for my envelopes are miscellaneous, fun, food, pet, gas, and beauty. Now you, your cash envelopes might be different. It's really important to, the whole point of the cash envelope method is to deter you from overspending. So the number one thing I tell people is when you're just starting out with the cash envelope method, Choose categories for your envelopes that you have a hard time with spending, like your food budget. The food budget is a big one. A lot of people overspend in that category. Use a cash envelope. It's a great way to see how much exactly you have left to spend until you get paid again. And that's exactly what I do for these categories. So after all of my savings is, are done, my savings envelopes equal 192. I had $423 left, now I'm left with $231. So now what? Now your question becomes, what do I do with this $231? For me, I'm paying off the last remaining debt that I have, which is my car loan. And so I've decided to throw all that extra money towards an extra debt payment of $231. When you're done filling out this bill tracker, your income minus all of your expenses should equal zero. That's what a zero, uh, zero sum budget really is, or a zero based budget. It's your income minus your expenses, and I give you the formula here to make sure that is correct. Your income minus expenses should equal zero. I also, if you are using my paycheck bill tracker for your budgets, match up the numbers i give you literally how to match up each one of these different things and where to put the numbers or your values as you go along with this worksheet so you might be asking how do i figure out these cash envelopes when i go to the bank i use what's called a cash envelope breakdown this allows me to literally go in the bank i hand the teller this little slip right here. Here's all the cash envelopes that I'm using for this paycheck and how much they are or what they add up to. So my variable spending plus my sinking funds envelope for this paycheck equaled $712. So let's take my groceries for example. I need $250 for my groceries. Now one of the things that I've learned you know, throughout my financial journey is it's a lot harder for me to spend psychologically to spend a bigger dollar denomination than it is a smaller bill. So it's a lot harder to hand someone a hundred dollar bill than it is say a $10 bill. So I like to, when I pull out cash from my envelope, I like to start with the biggest denomination and move my way down to the smallest. For my groceries, I need 250. That's two $100 bills and one $50 bill. I do that for each one of my envelopes and I get a bill count down here at the bottom. So I need 17 ones, five fives, three tens, seven twenties, and so on and so on. This is how much the dollar value is. And when you add these up, these should equal 712. It's a great way to check your math. It's a great way. Then you don't have to go to the bank and say, oh my gosh, how many ones do I need for my sinking funds and all that. You literally just add the information to this little thing, you cut it out and you hand it to the teller. So this is essentially how I do my budget and we'll be going over my budget overviews every single time I get paid. Now, don't forget, I will be adding this amount to my last paycheck of the month to put towards a debt payment or savings. 
Another kind of really cool thing is here's my sinking funds for New Year's. I had it in my purse and my son was actually not feeling very good on New Year's. We ended up staying in. I ended up um, cooking a meal plan recipe. We didn't spend any money. So I actually have an extra $50 from a sinking fund that I didn't end up using that I will also be adding to my last paycheck of the month to put towards savings or making an extra debt payment. So it's kind of cool that I found an extra 50 bucks that I was planning on spending, but I just didn't. So these will be going down to the bank at the end of the month um, with that last paycheck of the month for extra debt payment um, or an extra savings. I haven't decided which one yet. It depends on how much I get paid off for my car along the way. If you have any questions, um, these I'll put links to all of these different things that you're seeing in this video in the description of the video so you know exactly where to get this information. The, what I'm using for my budget that you're seeing in this video is the 2019 Budget by Paycheck Workbook. I'm offering all YouTube subscribers a 10% discount on this. all these different worksheets. The entire workbook is over 100 pages. You get literally a printouts for every single month. And so um, that's in the description of this video as well. If you have any questions on this budget overview, head over to my TBM family private Facebook group and we answer, um, we talk about my budget overviews, answer questions over there if you need additional help. If you found this video helpful, please share it and don't forget to subscribe.